Tim Plank from Acumatica is going to talk through dominating your markets with customer voice and firepower. So with that being said, I will uh, hand it over to Tim. Thank you, everyone. I'm excited to be here, and from that last session, the panel was great. Um, I might be smashing up a few of those things that you just heard, though, um, because when it comes to things like um, customer case studies or you know um, that type of thing, I would say it's not or or or, but I'm going to show you that it's and and and. <laughs> so um, we're going to be adding adding to it, and so I think I maybe have been watching too many of those Vikings shows that are out and really popular right now, so I'm all about like dominating and conquering, so you're going to be hearing a bunch of that, but um, basically I'll give you just a little bit of an, an introduction, and then we are talking about being better together is the theme, and of course I'm all about customers, so we're going to talk about um, better together customers and then better together product, which is an area we actually haven't talked a lot about yet today. Um, and then we'll just conclude and then if you guys have any questions, um, we'll make sure we have time for that discussion. So like I said, I've been watching a lot of Viking shows about conquering new worlds and so um, this kind of is an undertone here about captivating prospects, conquering competitors, boosting sales with best-in-class product marketing firepower. Um, and I'm going to say, I'm obviously focusing in on customer voice firepower. And so um, I would say that successful customer success marketing um, professionals really understand that the winning formula for effective marketing and sales is going to leverage an arsenal of product marketing and customer voice firepower to create awareness, uh, to help with in qualifying business opportunities, and then do what we've talked about that the C-suite loves is closing more deals and with the sales team sites with less effort. So the first step in the process, I'm going to say, is going to be understanding um, what products and features are available within your uh, business and within the offering that you have. And we haven't really talked a lot about that. I've, we've been talking a lot about, um, I've talked to many of you here who have a wide variety of products. We are a cloud ERP um, company, so we have a wide breadth of offerings and a platform that's um, pretty expansive. You're not going to be able to know every feature and every nitty gritty thing as a customer marketer, but um, helping teams understand the product and features and what's available. Um, so we have definitely, all of us probably have product marketing teams that work really hard to highlight those essential features and um, really set this foundation for the marketing plan. And I would definitely say without that, the power of that knowledge, and it's probably something I underestimated in my previous um, advocacy roles um, when I was with a little, little known software company in uh, the Seattle area. You might all figure out what that well, one was first before I came back from that side. But um, without having some of that product knowledge, you really can't assess like the vertical markets that you're into. Um, you know, you can't combat those entrenched competitors um, or evaluate those things. So definitely making sure that we have that that product knowledge and the market research is setting that foundation also for competitive intelligence. And so um, I definitely partner super closely with our competitive folks that um, are focused around competitive intelligence and making sure that, you know, with, whether we have battle cards or identify those competitors' weaknesses that we can exploit, like I said, and really not conquering, exploiting <laughs> those, um, those uh, enemies there. So. And you want to align that campaign messaging with what the corporate and industry messaging are. But we are really focused on infusing customer voice and the awards and reviews to strengthen that story. So I'm going to kind of, this is, we're actually going through a really good evolution here at Acumatica. We're growing so much and so fast that we are actually developing a customer voice um, playbook. So a lot of this really came to play um, in informing that, that product marketing playbook. And 
like I said, I am super focused on customers, and so I'm always going to think about what's important and what's what's important to our customers. And so I am going to share that you know we are all better together by working with our customers, and we want to make sure we have a winning customer reference and advocacy strategy. Um, fortunately, at Acumatica, we're We've been recognized for our industry-leading products and for customer satisfaction and those, those high scores and those high achievements. Um, we talk about being customer-centric, and I really would say that um, including customer voice it has really enhanced that, that messaging um, because we're going to be talking about product as, as we move into the next section, but really product is only as great as what our customers say about it. So um, this just kind of gives you a view. I think Liz had the, they have kind of that wheel or circle. Um, I don't like to think of customers being a cog in a wheel <laughs> that we're gonna cycle through, but making sure that we're always realizing that you've got, you're all of customers and you're getting new wins and getting them deployed and then getting um, to those delighted customers um, that you can use that can be a part of this program. The, um, I, I do like to, this whole thing of better together because we've been talking about how driving all of this advocacy and this reference strategy, um, it really does take everyone at the company and it really does require good participation and alignment of a number of teams. Um, that was something the panel talked about quite a bit and I that really resonated. So whether it's sales, CSM, marketing, product, but um, realizing that we are better together and um, as we partner with those in the organization. But when I think about our customers, the, um, the, the biggest thing that I hear from customers is that they want to hear from their peers. And so having that peer advice is something that is going to be a benefit to our to the customers that are engaging with you in these things like success stories and these customer voice testimonials, quotes, um, all of the different marketing efforts. So they are really benefiting because they're getting to see and hear from customers themselves on you know what applications there's that the other um, like-minded customers for us, it's Acumatica customers, are using. Um, they're hearing about how those customers are leveraging the features that they're, you know, hearing about or maybe they're not using in the product. Um, they also hear about how customers are um, connecting their solutions with our third-party marketplace applications just to really even bring more to the power of the platform. Um, as well as personalization and customization, those are things that we've talked about that, that we want to make sure we're personalizing things to our customers. But they also are personalizing our product and customizing it to the way they operate the business and they want to hear how others have done it. So customer voice um, really brings that peer advice to, to the platform, um, as well as what Jeff talked about, the whole implementation experience. Really making it real to, um, to a person who's considering <laughs> switching to your product is really key because they need to know, um, they want to hear from somebody that did it just the way that they would do it or switching from a product that they were switching off of. So um, having that implementation experience, not just the shiny, um, you know, glossy fairy tale story ending, but but really how it how it went in the long run. And so these benefits to customers are that they're discovering all of this with this new application, but they're doing it through the lens of their peers. And so they're going to be able to educate their internal teams who they want using the product because they're usually the owner um, for getting that message out there on um, how to use the product. But they also then can align those team members to the, the, the value proposition of, you know, why Whenever somebody is purchasing technology, most of all of our technologies, it's, it's not a, just you know, a quick snap decision and you click and order it. It's a, it's a value prop that they need to bring to their organization. So, um, and then, in, of course, improving user adoption within their customer base and within their, their usage um, definitely helps them be more satisfied with the product. And then 
Also, we want to make sure we're highlighting how they've improved their profitability and made things uh, more efficient because that's going to actually, you know, drive down those costs and bring highlight the ROI. Um, and then one other thing that is not something people often think about, but you want to find customers who definitely um, the, the power that comes to them is they appreciate the value of, of that PR or brand, uh, brand awareness. Um, and sometimes it's from a corporate level. Uh, we do tend to work with more small to medium size, medium um, businesses, and they do appreciate that business, um, you know, being uplifted and um, getting kind of the power of Acumaticus PR and brand awareness behind them. But sometimes it's also even from a personal level. Um, anecdotally, I can share a story that the kind of as it relates to that last bullet. Um, and this was when I was with the, the little known software company in the Seattle area that you might know about. They, um, we had a customer that had done a customer success story um, this was, you know, years ago, years ago, but it was with a, a small little minor league um, team that he had worked on their customer relationship management platform for the Toledo Mudheads. And um, as an outcome from doing that story, you know, he definitely was highlighted and um, you know, spoke at some events, and um, his story was featured on the on the website. And he ended up getting a phone call from the New York Yankees to help manage their customer relationship uh, management platform, and that was his dream job since he was a little kid. You know, like uh, so. You, you mean I'm not saying that every customer that does something with you is going to get their dream job, but you never know what could come of that. And so, you know, never underestimate the benefit that could bring to your customer just by, you know, being a part of your platform and your program and, and what you're offering from a personal level as well. All right. Now we're going to uh, make a shift to, to thinking about um, the power of product marketing. And um, I will tell you just in, from a personal level, I've always been a part of the customer um, success and reference advocacy program, been a part of a number of different teams. And when I came to Acumatica, it was I was a team of one, me, <laughs> that was doing customer um, customer marketing. And I thrived on that. I like, you know, I didn't mind necessarily being all about um, what it is I'm doing. But about 12 to 18 months ago, um, there was some restructuring in our marketing org, and I was moved under product marketing. And um, I, I think I always, in my head, dreamed of being a product marketer, but as a customer marketer, thought, well, I could, you know, I could never do that. Um, but one thing that I would say that's been really interesting to see, the evolution of that, is that the, um, because I was infusing these messages so heavily prior about how important these customer quotes and including customer voice in product efforts um, how important that was and how key that was, um, but we talked about a little bit um, about things being a muscle memory, and I just had that always that challenge of it just not quite getting through to product. <laughs> um, they, you know, product can usually just go do product, and um, they don't necessarily have to worry about the the customer piece of it. Um, and so this is something that's really evolved over time, and um, this is actually. Um, where our universe has come to today, and actually this is even old, I think it was from the, the spring, but um, what you'll see is that the, um, you know, being able to take all of the different product marketing content that, you know, our team worked so hard at and hard to develop, but seeing it in a new way in that the customer voice is a, in a way a circle around all of it, and so, What's happened is throughout all of the different, um, you know, top of the funnel and uh, middle of the funnel assets, we have really made it, we're bullish now about including customer voice in all of it. And so nothing leaves the product marketing um, desk, you know, construct, nothing is, is a done deal until we have customer voice attached to it. And, um, the other base kind of underlying that is you're going to see is competitive intelligence. And I definitely see the competitive intelligence and the customer voice going, going hand in hand. Um, 
some of these metrics that are called out here, like I said, are a little bit older. Um, Dana does call me the queen of content because. Um, That's 1,700 now, not 30. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty high number, but. Um, what's, what has happened is I definitely, I think I, some of you weren't in the room, but I did say we might smash some of the things you guys were talking about earlier about or, 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 like, or we do a story, or we do a customer voice piece, or we do a video, but to me it's all about and, and, and. And so we're getting, you know, um, as much content and, and fusing it into everything that we're doing um, really in a broad capacity. And so these numbers, even though we're a, a pretty small company, are pretty large numbers. And so, yeah, so now we're having, you know, we have, and I don't, I don't ever use the term case studies, but I, we have 109 customer success stories, 50 videos, you know, 1,730 customer voice snippets. And so those are video, audio, text um, stories and kind of content that we infuse into everything we're doing. But that all comes from having customer voice members. And so um, as to date, we have, I think it's like th almost 350 customer members who are engaging in these customer voice efforts. Um, and then 450 or so story, what we call storyboards. And those are um, strategically done. And so one of the questions I think somebody might have said, I think Kyle was like, well, you know, the, ironically, it's the people the people who want the case studies are marketing. And one of the things I might you know, mention with that is, one of the reasons for that is, uh, your integrated marketing team, they can't launch a campaign with just a quote or just a little country voice piece. They need to launch a campaign with a story, a full story, you know, whether that's a full video, a full um, case study. I could definitely do without PDFs because I don't know how many people read PDFs anymore, but um, the stories are really resonate and really are what um, drive those campaign efforts. And so um, your, your two marketing teams, are, their hands are tied without having those stories. Um, so definitely that's you know one piece of it, but having and, 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 and. I see a question. Oh right. yes, you have a question. Yes, thank you. So on the and, and, and aspect, how do you approach customers with the and, and, and? Do you start with one hand, or do you throw it all at them at once, or do you have a plan going into it thinking, I'm going to ask them for this on month one, month three, I'm going to ask them for this. How do you approach them? Uh, I definitely- Can you just repeat it to people yes. virtual in here? Yeah, the question um, is around, because we're talking about and, 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 um, how do you approach that with your customers? Because in my mind, what I tell the customers is we recognize they have a day job, right? This, this is not meant to take a lot of their time. Um, I would definitely make sure, I don't have a strategic plan around like, oh, at month one we do this, or month two we do that, but I really am an advocate for making sure that the customer has the choice in what they're interested in participating in. Um, I'm not afraid to ask them beyond something they may have raised their hand for though as well, because there are some people, you know, I've definitely had those customers that said, oh, we will never do a video, never, 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 and then they've done a video with me now, so, um, but it was by taking some of those initial baby steps and getting their feet wet with a few other things first um, and worked up to a, a video, but a lot of times they see that in the list of everything and they think you're going to go for the jugular and they're like, uh, no, they kind of shut down, so. Um, being able to get reach a customer where they're at and what um, opportunities are of interest to them. Um, and I don't have a big platform or tool to manage that, so it is a bit of a challenge. Um, and then making sure you are engaging them and, and um, getting them, providing opportunities for them, which doesn't seem to be a problem because we have a number of different activities and it's been great to see that the customers are starting to recognize that it's not just case studies anymore, right? They're, they're seeing um, the value of them contributing their voice and contributing these quotes, whether it's video, you know, informal video or audio, they're, they're seeing the value of that there. Um, this next slide is just kind of another view of that. This would be same thing, kind of thinking of that whole product marketing construct. 
um, and that funnel, that sales funnel, um, but actually infusing the customer voice up through it versus a circle. So we're playing it around with right now in our playbook of which, you know, which look and feel I guess we might go with, but I just thought just for um, here today for your audience, I might show both to see you know, what resonates with folks here. And then um, definitely this concept of better together across um, the team. And so the web team is definitely another one of those teams where um, they're very excited about having our customers involved in everything um, that, we, that we do. And so that's gonna be making sure we have quotes, we have um, both photography that is, you know, organic and unique to our customers and not, you know, not stock photography that's really canned and cold. And so it does take a lot of hands in the fire to make that happen, but um, it's definitely something that's made Acumatica, um, I would say, more friendly or seen as almost in a way the good guy, if you will, that um, you're seeing real people, real customers, um, and that's all the way through to even um, television advertising, uh, airport ads, things like that, that we're um, doing and making sure that we're going first with our customer. Um, the other piece of it would be, if it's not a customer, then it tends for us to be like a G2 um, review, customer reviews through G2 and the recognition around customer satisfaction and ease of use there that we're, that we're seeing. So um, we've actually made sure that Every product page on our website, every compete page has customer voice um, attached to it. And so there's, uh, there's a number of those I can share links and things like that post um, this event if you guys have questions or want to see more of that. But um, it's definitely something that's really key to what we're doing. And then those, the benefits I would say from this whole concept of better together um, with our partners, with our internal teams, with product marketing, which is the team I sit on now, um, is that you know they're really seeing the the power of understanding you know what this extensive product portfolio is, um, and what our customers care about and what's unique to them. Um, it's definitely helping them drive lead direct generation with these top of the funnel and middle of the funnel um, assets. And it's made those assets be not so kind of cold and canned. They're, they're definitely more real when you have customer voice attached to them. And then it's helping them in the areas of being, you know, an expert around the, the product and the industry. Um, we are an ERP, so it does tend to be very industry-centric and industry-related. Um, so making sure that we have that. And then also using those customer voice as proof points you know, against against our top competitors. I mean, this is this is really where the you know the your feet hit the pavement, if you will. Is is do you have customers um, that have you know switched from your competitor's product or evaluated and then selected you, and what are they saying about why that was? And so, making sure that you know you're using those as those proof points and training your internal partner. You know, teams to be using that same customer voice in their proof points, um, leading with that in a way, almost you know, as, as they're going. And then leveraging that competitive intelligence, um, definitely that's going to improve win, win rates. Um, I will say that last point is will what will get your C-level and your executive team's attention. Um, I can give an example around um, that aspect. I know our CEO, um, knew that we had invested in Slap5 as our customer voice platform and maybe felt like, oh, you know, I just haven't seen anything with that Slap5 or what are we doing with that? And um, in this, around the time of the you know, pandemic and the COVID shutdown, um, he was kind of saying that, but we were seeing, we were hearing from a number of customers of how much they appreciated Acumatica and having that in place or that, you know, Acumatica really came to bat for them to get get them up and running quickly so that they could pivot to working from home or some things like that. So I actually asked our CEO if he would um, reply to a mobile um, re remote capture response now, I guess is the terminology. Um, and just, you know, speak speak to that audience and speak to that effect. And um, he did it just from the same thing, the, his home office that we'd all pivoted to working from. Um, and we ended up 
pivoting our entire marketing messaging in that time um, around that, that piece with our CEOs, you know, um, kind of kicking it off or starting it, but then having the actual customer voice of the customers backing up what our CEO said, that he's not just saying anecdotally we're hearing from customers, here's actual customers saying why, you know, we're so grateful we have that in place at this time. So um, somebody who was maybe not a believer in Slack 5 became a believer pretty much overnight. And then another example from that would be, um, I have a super, um, our CMO is very, you know, professional and brand and everything has to look and, you know, be just right. So how does this customer voice come to play when you have a customer just respond, responding from their cell phone or, you know, that type of thing? And so um, from our customer, our CMO's perspective, he might say that's not really website worthy or, you know, something along those lines. But um, our, our CEO noticed that, hey, like, I love, love what the customers are saying, and it is so real and natural and organic, but I don't see enough of it because you're not seeing it on the website in, in some areas. And so, um, but he said these would be perfect for our social media team to really begin engaging and getting these, these customer voice um, stories out in a real way. And so, um, worked with the Slot 5 team to build a, a Hootsuite integration, which is what our, you know, our, um, social media team uses to schedule everything. And so that Hootsuite integration, I can just say, yep, you know, when I have one that's ready to go and ready to share, I can say, yes, this one's ready to share. And then the, they can use Hootsuite to schedule and plan out that, um, that effort. But our CEO is happy with that because he is seeing them more, you know, on LinkedIn posts and Facebook posts and, and Twitter messages and then resharing and liking those. So um, that's another example of where you know that that um, customer voice can really come to play, um, and making your your organization just more real and more, I guess, to dominate those markets, I guess, if you will. So, and then as we summarize, because I know I said a lot of different <laughs> different things, and um, like I was like a lot of you in the room, I probably tuned out product marketing. Um, more than I would have um, a, like a, a year ago. And so now I really definitely see the value of those product marketing assets really helping our customers and helping our partners to understand our portfolio and our features. And But they're actually way more compelling when there's customer voice included and attached to those. Um, and I definitely make sure we recognize that customers do benefit from, you know, that all of that different product and industry knowledge and the following others' best practices, and they're gonna improve those business processes, but they're also doing it through the lens of their peers when that customer voice is there and attached to it, and that's you know what they, they care about. Um, also, those, those partners and our, the sales teams really benefit by that increased lead generation and um, shorter sales cycles. Um, improved the you know the rates of all of that and um, making the, the time to close the sale quicker because sometimes they don't necessarily even need a reference because they already have seen the customer pretty much answering everything they would have asked on that reference call through the customer voice efforts and then um, that's my really my last point is just making sure that you guys know that you can really dominate your markets and use that customer voice power firepower to do that. So yeah, it definitely, if you guys, and there's a point brought up, I'd love to hear discussion points because some people don't always agree with what I say, so that's okay to be good for discussion or if you have any questions. Is a question? I, I have another question. Yeah. Um, early on you talked about how one of the selling points for advocacy activity could be improved profitability for the customer. First of all, did I understand that correctly? And yeah. second of all, could you connect the dots a little bit more of how that happens? Well, it's a, a part of, um, so I'll repeat the question. I didn't listen. Um, when I talked about for the customer's benefit, that concept of increasing their profitability, um, for, you know, how does that connect to the customer voice? And that is definitely for us, because as an ERP, it's definitely about making your business more efficient. 
Um, and so as they're hearing what other customers did to make themselves more efficient, um, that saves time, which saves money. <laughs> that, I mean, that saves resources. So all of those things that are around making something easier or um, doing something quicker, um, or as it relates to their business and what a customer says about that, definitely help them apply that to their business and where they're at and um, maybe bring an efficiency that they didn't have in their business because many of these businesses have been operating pretty inefficiently and for some of them for quite a long time. And so uh, making that shift, making that change is, is, is the need to hear from someone else who's done. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. How do you share back those stories with customers? Is there, do you share them through your CS org? Um, or is it more their public materials now and the customers could use them? So. Um, well, probably using that and, and, and strategy. Um, I, you know, I definitely am about making sure the customer, um, like include everything. So say something like a blog post article that's telling one of our customers' success stories. Of course there's text there. Of course it links back to a story, um, you know, that, that links to a video if they have it. But I also um, link to a full Slap 5 customer voice storyboard, which is that concept, I guess, more of um, like a recorded reference scenario that they might use, so that could link out to, but then embedding widgets right within the blog post. Um, so it's again the and, and, and. Some people like to read things, some people like to hear it, some people like to see it. So just making sure that I'm hitting all of those bells and whistles in as, as many ways that I can um, within that. So getting it back to sharing it with the customer, um, I mean, they're, they're seeing it, they're hearing it, we're, all of these product marketing assets get, you know, wide dis distribution. So, um, you know, once they've done a story with this, maybe they're not going back and forth, but um, organically, they they know that they, they're getting visibility to their business, and that's what they care about. Um, so that's definitely something that I, uh, I guess I, I like to make sure customers are seeing that more and more. Um, one aspect that I've really shifted in my customer um, in, in a way is that onboarding experience is a part of being a part of our reference program is shifting so they realize from a brand awareness perspective how powerful it is because um, I guess I try to tell them that to put it bluntly we spend a lot of money with Google <laughs> and so we still show up in all of those search results the highest you can show up well when we link back to their website and their, um, from that story, they're getting the benefit of all of that money that we spent with Google that's um, attached to their SEO. And it's something I never talked about before, <laughs> um, you know, to a customer, but it's because I'm engaging more with marketers at a business than we used to. It used to be a lot more just IT professionals, and they don't really care about that, but <laughs> more and more marketers are getting behind um, where, you know, Things like participating in a story and engaging with your IT, you know, platform or whatever it can be, just any, anything to get your brand out there. <laughs> and I know one is on the microphone. Do you want to, and then go over to him and have a question after you. So thank you. Sure. You're doing so much that my head is spinning a little bit <laughs> in a good way. Okay. Um, have you? I love that you were talking about kind of that the CEO and your CMO and how. The CEO was like, yeah, I love seeing this, and where can we, you know, put that through LinkedIn. Have you done anything with ghost emails? Um, and, and I'm sorry if you said it, and I missed it, but are you, it sounds like, yes, you are, and how is that going, and are you embedding those customer links and stories within those ghost emails that, like, your CEO or CMO, or, or who are you doing it with? Yeah. Um that's a really good question, and the we do use ghost emails. Um, for us, um, it's more, for now at least, it's more about our, our review strategy. So the, those customer review outreach, because a lot of that has to be an email marketing campaign, driven campaign. When it was from, coming from Kim Plank, customer marketer, I, I wasn't getting enough responses. And 
not that we get loads of responses through email campaigns, but when the ask is ghosted as is coming from our chief technology officer, Ali Jani is saying, can you please do a G2 review? Or, I mean, not worded like that, but you know, that, that message. Um, so, and we've taken those reviews and we have pulled them into our customer voice efforts in a variety of ways, but not necessarily through email. Email is a little bit tricky. I think with the slap five in your voice, um, you do have to still kind of, at least at this point, embed like a, an image of it and link to customer voice, the story, if, I, if I'm understanding it right. And seeing email come a long ways, and so that could, that could develop in the, in the future, but for now, I have used customer voice. Um, I did do a test that was really interesting and our, our integrated marketing team found fascinating that um, when I, I embedded um, a full customer video, two minute, the, all the bells and whistles, the music, the sound, the, you know, all of the cool camera work video um, as a part of uh, an email. And then I also embedded just a single little customer voice um, and the, cus the single little story actually performed higher um, than the actual, you know, marketing full-blown video, than, and, and they were really surprised by that effort. And then that was a, a kind of an aha moment for that team. Do you, sorry, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say, do you use the ghost emails in a way that your team can, somebody can write them and then like put them in the inbox? Like Nick Maynard has talked about this a little bit with Gainsight where someone can write it and then use your resources that way as well, rather than a more formal, I guess, marketing effort for like, you know, reviews yeah. or something like that. Yeah, um, we don't, but I don't have gain side, I don't think, and, and our- Oh no, just, it's a, just, Nick's talked about it. That's okay. the only word, where like, I could write it as the lead for customer advocacy, shove it into my CEO's inbox, <laughs> and then he can send it. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, oh, definitely sure. a lot of um, folks that use Marketo, you could do a lot more you know, with that. Um, we use HubSpot, and HubSpot has, has some of that opportunity, but um, we, can, we can do quite a bit, but I know we're always bringing, because we've been growing so fast, the integrated marketing teams have changed hands and making sure we're connecting with the right person, but there, there definitely is an opportunity there. Yeah. Yeah, over there. So you mentioned uh, you, you pay a lot of money to Google. Um, so SEO customer voice, our SEO team at Trust Radius has, has found in the last year, and so I wonder if you guys have found this too. When you're using customer voice snippets on um, landing pages, competitive pages, all that, Google actually appreciates that, values those pages more, so your search, search engine result when you can think of this goes up, but then also um, traffic to those pages goes up. Um, since they're higher on the page, uh, organically that is. And so um, I wonder, have you seen any savings to all that money you've been spending with Google and the company's been spending since using more customer voice on pages? Right, right. Uh, if we have, we're probably taking that money and just spending it right back with them <laughs> because, um, you know, it's definitely, our you know web guy is like, constantly is like, can I have such a high number of like MQLs that I have to drive, I have to drive. So that's why he, he's like, I need the bigger logo, I need the flashier logo, I need the this or that um, to drive some of that. So um, right now, because we're in a point where we don't necessarily have to pull that savings in, um, we're probably just keep reinvesting into into more. But um, I we do have, we actually, our product marketing team, we did um, develop a, Tableau dashboard that pulls in so we can see, same thing, all of those different marketing, um, the materials that we've been working on, like what, you know, what is the uptick there, and the customer success stories, the customer feature blogs, um, continually to, to perform the highest as far as the, um, you know, where traffic goes to the most. And so it's definitely something that their web team recognizes and they're never going to tell me to stop doing case studies, sorry, they're just not. They're going to keep saying do more and more and more, so. I'm wondering about um, how you disseminate all of this content that you have um, to your product marketing teams, to your sales teams, and how do you make sure that they're using it? 
Um, I think you mentioned like 1,700 different pieces. How do you make sure it's getting used? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, d depending on what type of an asset they're building, I mean, they're not going to be able to put, you know, those all those 1,700 pieces in there. Um, a lot of time they do need to turn it into a text quote or something like that, so um, to embed in there. But because we already have we already have it, it's not that much. It's not much more work for them to do. Um, I don't know. I feel like we we've, we've added to our product marketing team. You know, it was pretty much just my director and myself, and then one person. And now we've added. You know, we've been adding folks, and so making sure they have access to our Slack Five platform. Um, some of them like. You know, our Excel, they like, they'd rather have like a, you know, a quote um, library. And we have in the time, especially around COVID, and where we really needed those like remote workforce stories, you know, those quote libraries were gold. And um, in, my, in my days in the prior role, I mean, I would never spend time chasing down a cut for a customer quote. Like, it just, just wouldn't. <laughs> and in the time um, that, in this new area that we're living in, those customer quotes are gold and they're very valuable and we use them, the whole marketing team across everything that we do. And so, um, they, it's sad because sometimes they do take just as much effort as, as getting a yes from a, from a full success story, but, um, but we're using them you know, in so many different areas. So uh, I guess with product marketing, I'm, I'm on the team now. And like I said, that's new for me, about a year or so. And so making sure on those weekly calls, in my one-on-ones, um, definitely my director is, you know, she's she's bullish there too with the team. It's, she's the final approver, you know, on those different content pieces. So she's going to go back to them and say, well, where's your customer voice? Where's your customer voice? So she's, you know, got my back there too. Um, there's going to be a few assets it's not going to make sense for, or, you know, that type of thing. But for the most part, almost every single thing that we do now includes customer voice in some fashion. As a quick follow on sorry, um, do you build content and then say they will come, or do you work with the teams to figure out what needs to be built? Right. Um, well, that's a good question. I don't know if I have to say it. Um, she, the question was, do you build the content and then they will come, or do you work with teams and find out what needs to be built? Um, there is kind of a combination there, and I would say um, with the product marketing teams, um, they're tending to get a more, more and more granular, and I'm not necessarily going to have customer voice that gets that granular <laughs> yet. However, it's pretty easy for me to, to get that. So if I see, okay, this, this workload, you know, it's really kind of a manufacturing workload or, you know, um, we had a thing with quote to cash. So it was like, we gotta have a quote on quote to, quote to cash and what that, you know. I'm like, who has one on quote to cash? I'm sorry, I don't. And so anyway, I was able to send out, you know, just a mobile um, prompt response ask from through the Spotify platform or send out that link and I can capture some of that customer voice so you're on the fly, right? You can, you can do things much more, um, I guess, you know, just just on the fly to respond to those needs as you go. Some of it is gonna be standard operating. We're, we're gonna need our competitors' pieces. We're gonna need this, you know, the switch stories. We're gonna need the industry stories because of, of the type of thing we're doing. Uh, so you're gonna build it and they're gonna come and you're gonna keep adding to it. Um, and, and, you know, I just keep adding that. Exactly, one more. Thank you. This is BT with the Independent Advocacy Times. I wanted to ask you, I love the fact that you're doing tests and you gave an example of um, one that was, what, two minutes versus 30 seconds? What? Yeah, I mean, just the, the full-blown marketing videos, which ours tend to be in that two to no more than three minute video. Yeah, exactly. versus a customer voice snippet Yes, I think it was from the same customer, so it was their, you know, their full-blown video or them just answering, you know, why they switched from Microsoft Dynamics. Or That's what I wanted to ask. Yep. Is, are, are you taking a snippet from a three-minute, or are you saying 30 seconds? Uh, no. no, I gotcha, I gotcha, okay. Okay, great. So, um, yes, so the content, um, 
is an and, and, and scenario again. <laughs> so the, you know, every time we're, um, we're doing a video, every time we're doing a customer success story interview, every time I'm talking to a customer just onboarding them, I'm recording all of it and using all of it and, you know, basically collating that down and breaking that down so that, yes, I'm not, but what I'm doing, I guess, with the 30 second piece is I'm removing all of the fluff, the, the music and the, the other thing and just getting to what they actually are saying so that they're directly just responding to something that, that I just said, right? So similarly in the blog, I just said, this customer you know, said X, Y, Z was, was the key for this thing, or they got this gain out of it. Then you have them actually saying that thing right there. So some people are fine with just reading it. Others would be like, yeah, right, I want to I wanna hear it. So. Okay. Okay. Do we have one yeah. more? Um, yeah, we can do one more. We're ahead. We're ahead of time. So we there. And from a legal perspective, um, when do like what? How do you manage telling or asking the customer, "Hey, we want to do all this bunch of act and activities with you. Are you willing for us to post it on social media, X, Y, and Z, or how do you approach that?" Okay. Um, well, I right now, um, I mean, I did work with our legal to make sure that was sufficient, but because I have them opt in via permission form. Um, right now, all I use is I just made a smart sheet web form and that um, basically, you know, populates that the opportunities that the customer at least is open to and they've agreed they're willing to do. It doesn't mean they've done them or that nobody's hands are forced, you know, to do them. Um, but for now, that customer permission does meet the bill. Um, like I think Ursula said, should we go into an IPO or something like that? That could change. Um, but for now, that's enough. Um, our CEOs, he, he will use and abuse every logo he can, and he doesn't care if, it, if they're a customer anymore, he doesn't care if they're too big and legal, like, because he's like, if they come to you and say, I, I don't want my logo on there, we just take it down. I mean, and most of the time, they're not going to tell you to do it. So, um, so yeah, so they, you know, so we definitely are not in the same, some of you guys in healthcare, certain industries have to be super careful, financial services industries. Um, I did come from that little known company, that, and we actually were pretty liberal with um, those permissions as well, even, even working with those enterprise level clients at the time. Um, you know, because you can, all you have to do, especially with um, Slap Live and the customer voice, I literally just make them inactive and you just take it down and they're, it's gone, they're not there anymore. So it's pretty, pretty fast. You can respond very quickly up there. Question? All right. Thank you.